welcome to my automotive show KG Canyon Enthusiast. Today is the all new season of my show, season 4. Today we're going to start off the season by doing a comparison between two cars, between the between the Rolls Royce Ghost and the Bentley Flying Spur. Two arch rivals in an extremely very important segmentations for the rich and the wealthy around the world. And of course, we as would you know. Before we start the new season opener, I want to say hit the like button, subscribe to my channel and fight me and agree or disagree with me in the comment section and you tell me which vehicles I should talk about in the upcoming episode. So now let's start off the show. Now we all know the Rolls Royce Ghost is certainly ahead from the Bentley Flying Spur fairly quickly off the bat. I mean to be really fair, the Ghost is miles ahead from the, from the Flying Spur. But to make its advantage bigger, Rolls have decided that they want to have an extended wheelbase model. Yep, something longer, something better. And of course that's even better. But the question is, I'm not going to come to prejudgment though. There are points to make this arrow with. There's points that we must get this thing right. Now let's start off with off the bat, let's talk about the facts. Engine performances, which way I really want to come along because I know it's important. Now both of them have 12 series engines, you know the numbers of the Bentley Flying Spur and the Rolls Royce Ghost. So round one goes to the goes to Bentley Flying Spur on engine performance. So one one round, round one goes to Bentley. Second, let's talk about styling. The styling departments have often talked about the fact that the Rolls and the Bentley are different vehicles. The Bentley is more sportier combined with the more aggressive styling. So I presume you can say the Bentley looks good for its particular clientele, which is important in the ultra luxury category. But the Rolls Royce is more for the more wider consumer base in that category. The Rolls Royce Ghost is more respected in a certain way because of its aristocracy, its crust in the upper crust. The Ghost has a more simplistic design, old school elegance to go with it. Whereas the Bentley focus on sportiness and elegance, the Ghost focuses purely on elegance. So end of the day, the big question for me is, which looks better? It's a personal choice, really. If you want combination of both, go for Bentley. If you want the styling factor of the Ghost, or proper ultra luxury styling, then go to the Ghost. I'm going to give it a tie. So that means the Ghost gets a point, and the Bentley gets a point. So far, the Ghost, at the moment, is leading the charge at the moment on design. And on, at the moment, the Bentley gets, the Bentley gets a point, and of course, Bentley has two points and the Ghost has one. So, so far it seems pretty perky clear. Bentley is still ahead by a point, but then this is where things are now coming back to its benefit. Let's talk about its ride and handling. And of course, this is not looking good for Rolls at the moment though, because Bentley is by far the better handling maker. We always know that. But don't underestimate the Rolls Royce Ghost, because this is the catch. Ride and handling means ride and handling. So. It's not just about handling what comes, it's also about the ride and the Rolls Royce Ghost seems to be a head in For me, I think it's going to be better in terms of ride comfort than Bentley, which should be the case. But the Bentley gives you a sporty ride and a ride that's close to the Ghost. So the question that lies is, which should you pick? I presume both of them are fine. Both of them are not overly sporty, none of them have a hard ride. But I have to say this, but I have to go with the Rolls Royce. That means two points for the Rolls, two points for Bentley so far. So far it's grabbing itself back in action. Another thing about thing is practicality departments. Now boot space, some people talk about the Bentley or Rolls being bigger. So, But I'm not going to give you numbers and say which is bigger. Because both of them don't have big boots that families might practically use. And at the end of the day, the boot gets decent boot size. So compared to a normal vehicle, your boot size is far smaller than you expect to be because these focus is heavy on rear space comfort. So I'm not, give, I'm not going to give either of them a point on that department. So it's still 2-2. Two, two. You might think it's pretty even, right? But not quite. It's not very even though because this is where the Rolls is now pulling ahead. In the world of ultra luxury categories, there are a lot more than ride and handling and performance and that etc. Let's now talk about the biggest point, fuel economy. Now, we all know that the fuel economy department, the Bentley should be more frugal, but I would beg to differ. I might go as far as say the Bentley is actually less frugal than the Rolls Royce, considering it's a W12. But again, the fuel economy is subpar between both of them. Look, these vehicles have some stats that 
despite better than each other, don't make it good in general for compared rest of vehicles. That's the problem with such luxury vehicles. They're so good, it's your dream car, but full economy, boot space, you really can't give any one of them advantage because they're both not built to be ultra practical. That is something to consider. But I would say full economy department, the Rolls Royce might be a little bit more frugal considering it's a BMW V12. I, they might say it's entirely Rolls Royce, but I would say there's at least a couple of percent BMW input in that engine. So yes. So that means Rolls gets a lead now or Bentley 3-2. Fairly impressive then. Now let's talk about the three remaining key factors. Price. The Rolls will be much more expensive than the Bentley. Will be much more expensive. And with the new external wheelbase model on offer, it's a clear indication. So that got that down goes clearly for Bentley. That goes clearly for Bentley. So that's three, three. Again, they're not separating each other. Because remember, if the AI gave the advantage to Rolls within the boot space or within the boot space factor, it might be a different story, but that's not fair for the judgmental point. Because as I said, they both don't have big boots. So Telling either of them better is not making practical sense in that department, so yes. But now let's talk about the big thing, interior. The interior design of these half a million dollar vehicles. I can't be pick, I can't be choosy because these are so well detailed, I can't find flaws in them. The only way you can separate these interiors are the way you want it to be. Bentley is slightly sportier, Rolls is purely ultra luxury. And unlike Bentley, Rolls Royce have a something called marketing gimmick called a philosophy. And trust me, these philosophical terms will go really well with the rich and the well. They say minimalistic creature comforts, having buttons on the dash. Look, the automotive industry is a very weird world. We don't less buttons, but manufacturers use having more buttons is minimalistic sometimes. I guess that depends on the fact that some people don't like infotainment screens doing everything work. I guess that's something we can consider and myself, I'm not going to judge on that. I'm going to judge purely on what I think about this interior designs and what I think. I think the Rolls Royce is better than Bentley. Reality is simple. The Bentley's interior has a sense of sportness. The flying spur is a continental GC in a way. As a result, its interior might be also coming from it. So the bespokeness there is off the window there a little bit. So. That's a disadvantage. Secondary factor, the Rolls Royce interior is always special. The brand heritage and the history, the heritage of Rolls Royce combined with the craftsmanship is always advantage Rolls had over Bentley. Even in the days when badge engineering between the two brands, that was the core reality. Rolls always outdid Bentley by being the better heritage brand. So that means Rolls gets the lead on interior design. But of course, not just yet because that would be unfair. Because what about rear seat comfort on interior? And that department also, I think, Rolls Royce beats Bentley. It's quite simple as that. And I see one of those, and I can assure you, those are some fantastic rear seat comfort. So I'm going to say all look at the interior. Rolls Royce is ahead. It's 4-3. The last factor, that big question, brand heritage. Which brand heritage do you want? Because brand heritage plays a key part in these vehicles. Do you want the badge of a Rolls Royce or Bentley of a badge of a Bentley? That's a question, tough, because these both brands have heritage in the circles of our society. Rolls known for comfort from Maharajas to royalties to etc. Bentley's known for being motorsport champions. The massive V8 engines, the six and a quarter V8 and all etc. But the Bentley has a disadvantage to the game. Bentley spent most of the 1970s and the 80s by rebadging Rolls Royces been rebadged versions. So they can't quite gain on Rolls Royce brand heritage because even at Rolls Royce's worst hours, Rolls Royce kept their brand heritage tick for tack. That's the thing about it. So what does this mean? Does Rolls Royce win the game of heritage? Yes, it does win the game. So that's that is five to three. Rolls Royce does logically Rolls Royce wins the comparison. But let me give you a different proposition. The Rolls Royce has, has only one flaw, horsepower. Now, despite I, I, I clearly said Bentley was better and that drove it to Bentley. But this is the point. With 570 plus ponies in a Rolls Royce Ghost might make you unsettle. Because a 5-3 victory, according to me, might give you the idea, yes, it's better, yes, it's better. 
but it's not perfect. Look, with the look, when the last in Rolls Royce goes, the black badge models gave the edge over Bentley in some departments on performance. But right now, performance is a weakling for Rolls Royce, and that's something you have to consider when you're buying one. And also another factor is that this. Don't think that Bentley is good as Bentley says it's good for three significant reasons. First, you have a German-made engine. We all know where the engine came from. Secondary, it's a Continental GT with the photos in it. Whether you agree or not, I believe it's a fight in the comment section if I'm wrong about it. Three, it's an important factor. It doesn't have the same charisma. So outside the victory from the round of roads, which is a five-three when according to me, there's another factor involved in it. It's about brand heritage. You think about it, it's also about the brand heritage factor as well. So, it's not easy. It's simple. Buy the Rolls Royce, you're getting the better deal. The Bentley is good for the consumers who want sportiness. That's, that's, that's a theory. And the 5 to 3 win which I gave the Rolls Royce is clear. But remember, I didn't count the, I didn't count the fold around department or the boot space. Sometimes I didn't count the fold space. Because the four emissions now, because both of them are below power in the four department. Remember that. So that's something to remember. So thank you very much for joining my show. So, so my season opener. So thank you very much for joining me. Thank you very much.